for the last almost month and a half, two months or so, maybe a little longer, I've been learning Next.js and I've been building something that's getting really close to being released soon that I'm super excited about. It's been so much fun to actually work on something that I want to work on and write code for myself, which is something I haven't done in a very long time, even before taking a break from programming and even after working as a software developer before I became a designer here recently, I haven't really written any code for myself and I haven't worked on any side projects. And then after taking almost a whole year off or more from writing any code at all recently, I felt really rusty. When a fighter takes a long time off from fighting, they call it ring rust and they get back and a lot of the times they'll lose the match because they just haven't fought in a while and a lot of things kind of degrade even if you're training and you're still kind of active not actually getting in there and fighting you'll feel it i feel like i had ring rust recently a couple months ago i did that tutorial for the next js version 14 with the app router and i learned all about that and i hadn't written any React code in a very long time. Mind you, my React experience is pretty limited. I worked with it for about six months professionally, like four years ago. I also built my portfolio site in Gatsby, which is a React static site generator that like nobody uses anymore. And I mostly worked in Angular. I know enough React to feel comfortable enough like moving through a code base that uses React, but I'm not an expert in React by any means. If anything, I know more about Angular, but I haven't written any Angular in a while because that was like two years ago that I worked a position where I used a lot of Angular and I just have a lot of ring rust. Maybe I should call it code rust. Yeah, I think I just have a lot of code rust. And after doing that Next.js tutorial and recording it and posting it here, I felt very motivated to continue learning and, and start building something, right? Because I, I believe that the best way to learn is through building. I believe that for beginners and I believe that for someone like me who's taken a break for a long time. I was really concerned I lost all my skills. I felt like I took too long of a break from coding. I felt like I was gonna get back in there and just be completely lost and feel like I didn't know what I was doing because a year is a very long time off. And I did notice that I was Googling stuff, more chat GPT than Googling, but I was searching for the answers a lot even for simple things that I was just like, man, I, I know how to do this. Some regular Git commands that I used to use all the time. I forgot like these Git commands that I used on a daily basis. I forgot some of them and I had to like Google stuff like that. And then just basic stuff with Next.js that I wasn't familiar with. And a lot of stuff with React that has changed drastically in the last five years or so, right? There's a lot of things that I'm just not familiar with at all. Feels like very basic stuff. But I found myself not understanding these things that felt like they should be simple. And I found myself feeling a lot like a junior developer. I found myself feeling like someone who took a year off of coding. But I realized too that it wasn't that bad. And it felt a lot like riding a bike, a bike that you're building as you're riding it. And it's falling apart and breaking, but you gotta keep pedaling because it's moving. And if you stop, you're gonna fall off of it and you might not wanna get back on it. And I wanted to make sure that I kept pedaling on my project that I was working on because I really want to build it and I'm really excited to build it. And I noticed that after a couple weeks, I started to feel pretty comfortable again. I started to remember some of my keyboard shortcuts from VS Code that I used all the time, which I kind of forgot those too, along with other things that I forgot. And I started to feel like, all right, I know what I'm doing now. It took me a little while to understand how Next.js worked and it took me a bit to understand just a lot of new things that I just didn't know. But after a while, with some persistence and patience and time, I felt like it's not that bad anymore. Like now I feel like I really know what I'm doing again. Not really. I never feel like I really know what I'm doing because I have terrible imposter syndrome. And it's even worse when you take a break. But I knew from my experience that I just had to keep going. I just had to keep researching and keep reading documentation and keep prompting chat GPT to help me get through it. I will say too that using ChatGPT 
for the first time as a developer because I'm super late to the party with AI and I'm even using Copilot, which I'm not a big fan of. Using ChatGPT has been pretty awesome. And I will say that I wish I had this when I was learning how to code, but I also have to say as an experienced developer, you gotta be careful as a beginner when you're coding and using ChatGPT. This is like a side note, but I feel like it's worth mentioning because it's something that I experienced in this whole process was that I found myself using ChatGPT as kind of like a rubber duck sometimes. Instead of talking out the problems with myself, I would talk out the problems with ChatGPT and I would get some results that would either give me a better idea of what was going on, give me like some guidance on what I should do, give me some direction on what I should read. But when I started getting into the weeds of some technical problems and specific problems that I was having. And I was asking ChatGPT questions that it felt like it didn't really know the answer to. I started to see some of the weaknesses with ChatGPT and, and coding. And I started to actually have to correct it sometimes. I legit would get big blocks of code and dump it in there and be like, hey, help me out with this. And then it would give me back responses. And as I'm reading through the responses, I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. Like you're making mistakes. Like there was a lot of times when I was just like talking to chat GPT, like it was actually a real person. I can't think of a specific example, but there was a lot of times where I'm like, hey, that's, that's giving me a side effect that I don't want. Hey, that's doing something that's going to break something somewhere else in the code that I gave you. And, you know, ChatGPT is like the ultimate mentor and also like the ultimate coding buddy because you can call it out and it's always like super polite and it's like, well, certainly, sorry about that. You know, yeah, I made a mistake. If that would have been an actual human, there would have been a lot of uh, back and forth with saying like, hey, dude, your code sucks. You're doing something wrong here. ChatGPT is very humble. But it also makes a lot of mistakes and that's where I noticed that I used it as a crutch at the beginning of my time back in programming. But then I started to realize that the real value of being a programmer is being able to find the answer on your own. And even though ChatGPT is a great tool to help you, if you just don't know, it might give you some bad advice, it might give you some bad information and just send you down a rabbit hole that you have to be able to figure out how to get out of on your own. And that just feels like a recipe for disaster for someone who is new, just getting started and is heavily relying on ChatGPT. I will say that, I, and I have no shame in it, early on in my getting back into programming two months ago after learning Next.js, I was just using ChatGPT for almost everything I had to make my life easier because it's great for typing out boilerplate and doing very simple things. But at the same time, if I was just getting started, it, it could have, it could have been bad. And I'm sorry I digressed and talked about chat GPT there for so long, but it's just something that I've been using recently. And like I said, I know that I'm way late to the party, but I feel like I have to share that with you because as someone who feels like they're just getting back into programming and is using these new tools the same way that a beginner who is just getting started with programming might be using them. I feel like it, there's a lot of value in me saying this in this video where I'm talking about how I feel about coding again and using some of the new tools that are out there. With that said, I wanna briefly mention Copilot. So Copilot, sometimes feels like it gets in the way more than it helps, especially with the auto completion suggestions as you're typing. I find that sometimes it's really great at detecting like what I'm trying to do if there's already other examples on the screen or if like I've got an import that's pretty commonly used and the way that you would have to use that import to define some of your variables or whatever, it'll, like it'll auto complete that pretty well. But if you've got a lot of stuff going on in your file and you start typing out a new function or something like that, it seems to struggle to know what you're trying to do. It's great to auto-complete some console logs and it's great for some boilerplate code generation sometimes, but I've noticed that when I try to use it to like fix my issue, because you know, with VS Code, you get that fix issue prompt and when you have Copilot, it says like, hey, you know, you can fix this issue with Copilot, like it's never once given me like a good solution. And I find myself going back to chat GPT and I know that there's a built-in chat in VS Code for Copilot, but for some reason, I just feel more comfortable going to chat GPT because he's kind of been my buddy, my pal, my, my little rubber ducky programmer guy that I've been reaching out to. And 
I just don't feel the same way about Copilot. And maybe it's because gotten used to using chat GPT and I forget that the chat option is there for Copilot and I only really use the autocomplete. I really feel like I might just cancel it and not keep using it because I feel like I use it so little and it's only like 10 bucks a month. It's not a big price, but if I'm just using it to finish my console log completions and give me a little bit of boilerplate that I would have just copied from another function and make the modifications to the new function that's doing something different than to just pay 10 bucks for Copilot to do that for me, but I don't know. I, I guess I just wanted to talk about those two things because I've been using them. They've been a lot of fun to use and I see the value in them. And as someone who's just getting back into it, I definitely recommend using them. I feel that regardless of if you're someone who's just starting out or if you're someone who's taking a break from programming and just getting back to it, take advantage of all the tools that you can in order to make your life easier. And the same way that Stack Overflow or Google can take you down a rabbit hole of bad answers, AI can do the same. They're just tools for us to use. At the end of the day, we got to remember that our jobs are to think and to solve problems. That's what a programmer does. That's what a good software developer does. We get paid to think and we get paid to come up with solutions. Writing code is just a small part of the big picture of what a good software developer does. And anyone who's been in the industry long enough will tell you that the longer you are a software developer, it's almost like the less code you write. And there's a lot of truth to that. And as someone who's worked in the industry for almost seven years, even though this last year I was just doing design work and wasn't technically doing any development work, I have enough experience to tell you that that's 100% true. So as long as you're thinking and solving problems, that's what you need to focus on. And that's what I've focused on as I'm building my new project. And it's all about solving a problem for a specific group of people that I think need a problem solved. And that's what I'm working on. I'm kind of being secretive about it. Really a platform for traveling families to link up and kind of network um, in that sense is the high level explanation of this. And my MVP is coming soon. And it just feels so great to do something that brings me joy to do. And I just remember like the same feeling that I would get when I was learning how to code and when I was working on stuff that I wanted to work on, like I'm feeling that again. And I've kind of already covered this in a video and I kind of already talked about it, but after getting back on that bike and riding it for a little bit and now feeling comfortable again, I do feel like programming is magical. Like being able to build and create something from scratch, from like a blank page and an idea is one of the most satisfying things that you get from being a software developer. And it is hard to explain to someone who is new and just getting started when you've got an application that has like forms and profiles and a map and blogs and the ability to communicate with other people and send messages and all this different stuff that goes into like this big application that I'm now getting close to launching an MVP for, to think that that all starts with just like an idea and, and like a couple little things. Because I remember when I first got started, I went to a React meetup in Vegas. I was probably like five months into my self-learning and trying to learn how to code and get a job. And I remember there was this guy there that ran the meetup and was chatting with him. And I was very eager to learn React and to think how far I've come now. But I was asking him questions and he was just talking about everything he knew about React to someone who's just my eyes started to glaze over because so many of the things that he was talking about, so much of what he was trying to explain was going over my head. And I appreciated him so much for taking the time to talk to me. And I remember asking him like, what's something I should build so I can learn how to use React? He suggested that I learn how to build like a chat app, you know, like Messenger or something like that. And I was just like, whoa, dude, you are really, really overestimating my capabilities right now. Like I was just getting the hang of HTML and CSS and I was learning a little bit of JavaScript at this time. And I and React was just one of those buzzwords that I kept hearing. And I may have learned how to like install React app or create React app at the time, but that was pretty much it. And he told me to build this big elaborate thing, which was really like just one component, like looking at it now as someone who's experienced and I can totally be like, yeah, I can build that. Like now I can build that with confidence. I'll have to Google a lot of stuff. I'm sure still, because 
I, you know, it's not something that I've really done, but I, I know that I could manage to build that. But at that point in time, that was just something that was so big and so scary. Now knowing what I know that everything just starts like one little piece of the component, one little piece of the puzzle. And as long as you have a good idea of what it is you're trying to build, you can figure out all of that stuff along the way. That's my big takeaway from this. If you've gotten to this point and you've watched this video from after taking a break, after like not writing code for a while, being someone who has gone from the guy who couldn't even build a little messenger app with React to now having a, a full blown Next.js application with, you know, database calls. It, it does CRUD functionality and there's a lot of little features that are built into it. And I have like a list of other features that I'll want to add once I get it out and I'm going to integrate Stripe payments and I'm going to set up all the stuff behind that, like the web hooks and just doing all of this SQL stuff with Superbase and Postgres, which are technologies I've never used. And like doing all of this now and thinking like how little I knew back then and how much I know now, but still feel like I don't know enough. And it still feels like I know so little when I see people who have way more experience than me or even have less time experience wise, but have focused more on the things that I didn't focus on because I did like UI UX development for so long that I was really like the front end HTML CSS guy and I knew JavaScript, but I wasn't, I would say like a good you know, full stack developer or a, a front end engineer. I, I was the guy that played around with the UI and then learning all that stuff and working in real frameworks and working as full stack developers and like going through the progression of where I'm at now and then taking a break and then just feeling all of those emotions and that roller coaster and like the ride of learning a skill, trying to get good at it, and then realizing that there's just so much more to learn and that you'll never learn everything. But as long as you keep building and as long as you keep having like that spark and that interest for it, it's it remains like a fun thing and something that you want to keep doing. And I feel great right now. And I'm super excited to continue to learn and continue to build. Just know that even if you take a break, even if you're just getting started, just keep working at it and you'll figure stuff out. You'll fumble around with things. You'll ask AI, you'll Google stuff, you'll read documentation, you'll watch videos. And eventually that idea you're trying to build, that thing you're trying to do will become a real thing. And like, it's such a great feeling. And that's what I love about programming. And that's what I've realized after taking a long break and coming back to it, what I've been missing from being a programmer. It's pretty nice. All right. With all that said, I hope this video was helpful. Sometimes I don't know if I go on these long rants and I just talk about like personal experience, if it is helpful to people out there. I know when I was starting out, I used to like hearing stuff like this because it's kind of nice to hear from someone who's got some experience that they still feel like they don't know what the hell they're doing and they still feel like they're not a good developer. I've worked with some bad developers. I've worked with some great developers. I know I'm somewhere in the middle there. And as long as I just keep working and keep learning, I'll get better. And so will you. And that's why I share this stuff. And I want to get back to this type of content where I'm just sharing all aspects of my life and still talking about a little bit of coding stuff because I know a lot of you people out there who are watching these videos are still interested in this stuff and I wanna make sure that I'm serving all of my audience. All right, with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.